you need to know that God loves you. Get ready. Today's show is going to bring you hope. Well, hello, and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I'm your host, Heidi Mortensen, licensed marriage and family therapist. And I am thrilled to have with me Real Talk Kim. Hello, Kim. Hello, Heidi. So good to be here with you. Yeah, and you are a best-selling author. Your name, you're, you're a pastor. Your name is Kimberly Jones, but you go by Real Talk Kim. You have millions of followers on Instagram and you travel the world, uh, but you have a very powerful testimony and you are super real. Before I got on, I'm like, Jesus wasn't in a box. And it's what <laughs> I love about you is that you are, you, you are a hundred percent you, and that's what is bringing people to know Jesus and to be set free. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Super honored, humbled yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about you tell me about your testimony you know why you're even in this place of being able to talk you know talk so confidently about freedom you know I wasn't always confident in fact I was uh, raised a preacher's kid um I mean literally my mom and dad had me in Jacksonville uh, North Carolina on a August 29th and by, by August the 30th, we were already in an airstream traveling. And so I was raised in church, raised around God, a very strict religion. We didn't wear uh, pants, cut our hair, all that kind of stuff, that strict. But at about 15 years old, my dad had an encounter with God and found the grace message. And in the process of him finding that grace message, he was like, man, God is not mean like we portrayed him to be. And so I just watched my dad through the years just show grace. Like even with me, I mean, I was a rebel. They told me I couldn't do something. I was going to go do it just to prove a point. <laughs> yeah. Can't get married to him. And I'd run away and get married to him. Uh, yeah. I never did anything small. And I realized that probably about probably about 38, I walked through a divorce at 36 years old. Uh, it was an 18 year marriage. I had two beautiful kids by this man. Um, it, the, the marriage was over. There was nothing I could do. D addiction had come in really yeah. wreaked havoc. Sin. We opened mm -hmm. doors, man. And sin took yeah. us further than we wanted to go and cost us more than we wanted to pay and kept us. Yeah. And he spiraled. And it, the best thing that ever happened to me was that divorce because it made me start looking at myself. And instead of pointing fingers at other people for the reason I was the way I was, religion, parents, preacher's mm -hmm. kid, church people, I had yep. to look at me and say, if something is going to change, i got to work on it. And girl, it took me, it took me probably, I thought it was going to be a year of freedom, a year of getting delivered from me. It took me five years. I stayed wow. in my house with my two sons lost everything and had to move back in with them at 36 finally at 37 I started picking myself up still mm -hmm. angry at the world still bitter still resentful yep. at God for the storms I created and about 40 years old it was like I flipped mm -hmm. it was like there was a flip that took place in my life and mm -hmm. I started walking out of the pit and I started realizing that as long as I got a pulse, God, you got a plan. And I began to lay hands on myself, Heidi. And I began to say, God, because I remember how lonely I was in that place because I disappointed God walking through a divorce and people were talking about me. And I began to lay hands on myself every day and just say, God, let me be you with skin on it. Let me be there for the Kims that nobody's there for. The people yeah. that they have done a doozy with their lives. Help me yeah. crawl out of this pit. And then I want you to repackage me like you did, Joseph. And I want you mm -hmm. to reintroduce me. And that's what God did. And so now here I am writing books. I was in special ed my whole life. Still don't know where mm -hmm. comics go. And I've written have books. God's trusted me with this platform. And it's because I walked through hell and came out on fire. And so mm -hmm. for all the listeners today that are feeling like, that are listening to us feeling like they've, they've messed up their life or mm -hmm. they're in a dark season. 
Mm-hmm. You got to get up and you got to move out of that season. Even if you don't know where you're going, you got to yeah. put a, 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 an earmuff on of what you're exactly. hearing people say yeah. and spiritual eyes to see that God loves to use people with the worst past to create the best futures. And that's what he's doing. That is exactly what he's doing. And you, uh, and can you share why people call you real talk, Kim? <laughs> I, I mean, I, cause this is part of where I think you're making such an impact because there's so much um, like just like religion and, and where things have to be a certain way and you don't do that. And it's because you're being Jesus the way that Jesus wants you to be like you're yeah. being yourself. So can you talk about that? And just, I feel like you need to just even just release confidence for some of us to just be our quirky self, whatever that yeah. is, we yeah. need to just be the me that God created us to be. You know, Heidi, it was so funny because I went on Twitter uh, probably about nine years ago, and it was right whenever I was starting my healing journey. And Mm -hmm. I went on Twitter and tried to open up a Twitter and my name, my government name was taken. And Twitter (laughs) said, I think Real Talk Kim, you know, they always give you options. Oh, yeah. (laughs) For a Real Talk Kim. Now, nine years ago, I'm still at Bloomingdale's making $13 an hour, but God is in the details. Like God was like, you're going to come back and visit Twitter in about three years and oh. you have 11,000 followers and you don't know how you got them. And, <laughs> and it's like, real talk him, because when you come out of this dark place you're in, girl, you're going to come out as real talk him. And he gave me that name. Here's why he gave me that name because he knew he was doing a work in my heart where literally millions of people were going to follow me. And when I say, I love you, they will look at me and they will type back. I know you do. I can feel it. And God knew that I was going to be the girl that he was going to put in front of the world that was going to be able to talk real and say, get up. What are you waiting on? That DUI yeah. saved your life. That addiction saved your life. That mm-hmm. divorce saved your life. Rejection was God's protection. And people would literally get free. And mm-hmm. that's why God gave me that name, Real Talk Kim. He did it. He was in the details before he ever even opened one door for me. And I know it was because he said, you're going to be able to reach the people that nobody else can reach or want to reach. Girl, I'm talking like people that turn their back on God. They Mm -hmm. literally turn him back to God. And I'm so thankful because it is so important that we learn how to be authentically who we are. I struggle with people pleasing my whole life until I hit rock bottom and and found the rock at the bottom, which was Jesus. And I was, I was intentional, Heidi, about saying, Kimberly, you're going to love who you are. And you're not going to let people in your comic section, haters, religious people, you're not going to let them make you become like them. You're going to stay at the feet of Jesus and let God direct you. That's why it's important that we all find who God created us to be. And allow the pain that we've made it through, the terrible seasons we've made it through. We allow him to use that as our message, that mess into a message. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what your life has been. What would you say was like the turning point for you to finally, you know, get up? Because you, you know, like, I mean, I think your story is actually a lot more common than what people really realize is that just because you've grown up in church, that doesn't mean jack squat like you need to actually do your own work so what what was the moment where you actually realized oh I need to surrender or oh I need to actually yield to God this isn't my way or the highway do you remember that moment yeah girl I remember it was in my early 40s and I was laying in my bed one night and I was man it was like I was all by myself but I was so tired of being stuck and I would, I laid in the, in my mom and dad's house and feeling sorry for myself, being a victim in my own story, mad at God for the storms I created. And I remember whispering these words to God, God, take this pain away from me. Like somewhere inside of me, I was thinking God was a genie in a bottle. I didn't know what to do when you're in the depths of hell, walking through terrible season, you can't even most of the time pray. Like you just right. stuck. Mm -hmm. And that night I heard a still small voice, man. It was like, just this calm came over me. And it was like, God said, I can't take it away. You got to get up and walk away from it. 
And girl, that thing slapped me in the face. And I just started weeping that night in that room. And I said, God, I want to forgive, but I don't know how. I'm raised in church. Like, I want to forgive. I don't want to be angry. I don't want, if I died, nobody would even come to my funeral because I have literally put walls up to guard my heart. I was afraid of abandonment. Mm -hmm. And it was like that night, girl, it was like eight hours. I laid in that bed and cried like a baby. There was no preacher laid their hand on me. My mom and daddy wasn't in that room. There was no therapist at that moment. It was just me and God. And for the first time, it was like God said, now you're ready to surrender. And now watch what I can do with your surrender. And girl, I tell you, I came out of that room. I promise you, it was like literally generational curse. Curses were broken over me that night. And, and was it a one moment thing? I don't think so. I think it was every day I was listening to podcasts. I was, yeah. I, I had voices that I loved that spoke to my spirit and I would yeah. listen to them every day and I would drown out the negative words. I would, the self-talk I was telling myself, I would stop allowing people on social media to label me and me believe it. I stopped reading comments. I unfollowed some That's people tough. in real life. I took yes. some people to my VIP section and moved them to the balcony and said, I love you, but from up there. And girl, when I tell you, God did a 360 on me. And it was mm -hmm. when I realized God ain't doing all this. It's going to take me retraining my brain and saying, mm -hmm. do you want to be here? Do you want to be working at Bloomingdale's till you're 60? No. But then you better get 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 rid of all those attitudes that you are walking around with, feeling sorry for yourself, and get up and change. And so, yeah, that's what happened. I remember, get up, Kim, and walk away from it. Yeah. So when you look back now and you see the history of your parents and the you know even revivals that your dad was in, because I I've like actually wondered this when I learned about the supernatural, I was like, why doesn't everybody believe? Why doesn't everybody believe? And I, I was so like naive that there's so many people in the church that don't see it, but I didn't grow up super religious. So it was super easy for me to just believe. I was like, well, the Bible says this. So of course we cast out demons. Like I wasn't questioning it, but you grew up with it. And so you were in it. When you look back now, what do you think when you look back? Like how, I, I guess what I'm curious about is how we can, how can we teach the parents today that have their kids they're raising them in revival that how how can we open their ears and eyes like to a kim if their child is a kim at that age what can we do to like not have it take so long and, and operate in rebellion you know i remember one distinct moment where my life changed because i saw jesus in my dad my dad would never my dad protected us. Like my dad knew, God, my dad knew that I was in a failing marriage, but he wouldn't preach at me. He would just love me. And I remember one night at 38 years old, after my divorce, I was so angry because this marriage of 18 years, I was embarrassed. The only one in my family that ever got divorced. And I went, got drunk. I was hanging out with all my friends. I got drunk. My two kids were at home. And I remember walking in the house, their house at 38. And I literally knocked all the family pictures off the wall going upstairs because I was so drunk. And I hear my dad getting up and coming upstairs because it was like, like I'm thinking you are 38 years old. Like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely tipsy. And all of a sudden I hear my dad walking upstairs. And so I proceed to lay down on my bed and act like I'm asleep. And all I feel is my dad's breath. And I looked up at him and I felt so much shame and guilt. And like, man, I bet I've really disappointed y'all. Like I felt that same thing the enemy had just kept bringing on me. Mm -hmm. And my dad looked at me and he said, baby, I hope you ain't hung over tomorrow because you're going to lead praise and worship at church. I said, Dad, I can't leave praise and worship. There's going to be a huge tornado bolt come through and kill all your people in that church because I'm so oh, oh. And Heidi, he said, no, I ain't losing you. He said, I'm not sitting you on the back of the church until you figure it out. He said, you're going to figure it out while you're walking in your purpose. That's mm -hmm. what you can do for your kids. You can mm -hmm. stop nagging them and you can show them Jesus. 
when your kid walks in that house and they're drunk or they're they're struggling, you got to be like that man with the prodigal son. He oh, ran yeah. out to so that son and welcomed that son back in to a mm. place of honor. That's how mm. you get kids. You don't oh. shove this down their throat. You don't shove Jesus down your husband's throat that isn't saved and you are. And now you think you're so saved that you're going to divorce him because you're unequally yoked. You show people Jesus. <laughs> you show yes. people your, you show Jesus through your actions that they feel so much love. They're like, man, whatever you got, I want. Y'all that night, literally, I never walked back into a bar like that again where I literally went in intentionally to get tore up from the floor up to hide my pain. Come on. Because he showed me Jesus. That's how you get your kids. You love them where they are. Mm -hmm. You don't judge them and you pray in secret for them. And when you see them, you talk to the king inside of them. You talk to the, the queen inside of them. You prophesy over them. I ain't losing you. So what do we got to do? Where are you going? Where can I go support you? So that you can see what Jesus feel, how he feels about you. And your kids will come to Jesus. Your spouse will come to Jesus through the love that so you show. Good. This is so good. Like you're, you're speaking out what so many people do wrong, which is they, they are belittling and they're shaming and their heart is good, but it's, it just like makes people worse. And in, in what you're saying, I hear a very free father that your dad was yes. so amazing and he was free. Yeah. So I would love it if you could talk a little bit about your deliverance story. I know it was an ongoing, a lot of forgiveness, a lot, but cause I, I don't think it's talked about much in the church also. Like I, that was another thing I'm like, well, Jesus cast out demons. Like we can too, but there's also the softening of our heart. You know, like it doesn't, it's not just, Oh, it's a demon that, that to me, that's easy. There's all this hard stuff, which is forgiveness and the discipline. And can you talk a little bit about your deliverance story? You know, for me, I was raised watching the, you know, demons get cast out of people and I'd run out of the church. Like as soon as the demons started coming out of people, I was like, they jumping in somebody. I ain't letting them jump in me and I'd run <laughs> because I, I, I saw such an ugly side of it. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was working at Belk, probably about 38 and there's this lady named Julie and Julie knew my father. Julie knew how I was raised. And it was like, God sent her as an angel for me. And she said, I got this friend that he's a deliverer. And I thought, Nope, I, I, I will be like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I ain't going to see no, no deliverance. I, I, and somewhere in me, I didn't really think I needed it, you know? And the more she talked about it, because I would, I wasn't sleeping, Man, my skin was breaking out. I was uh, an undercover smoker. <laughs> you know, I was like all the sin that I was still carrying from shame because that's mm -hmm. shame what makes you do all of that. It makes you become yes. a shame. Absolutely. And usually it's because of people that you got that shame. It ain't God. Absolutely. God's up there saying, I knew this was going to happen. I'm going to use all of it as a testimony. So mm -hmm. I finally, his name was EO, was this guy's name. And she said, <laughs> you she was the sweetest she's like an angel and she said I'll go with you and she goes I really think that this is what you need and so I went to it's called Sozo I think now mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and I went and for four hours this man just walked me through like it was all connected to shame Heidi mm -hmm. it was all connected to all the things that religion had had just drug on me and made me feel like I was not validated, that God could never use me because I was a woman and we didn't believe in women preachers. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I was a divorcee and God show ain't going to use a divorcee. Uh, I, all of these, I was a special ed, so I can't do anything real smart. You know, I'm, I'm dumb. And I went to see this man and girl for four hours. I can't even remember. I, I, I mean, it was like, I just sat and cried like a baby. Because the whole time, all he kept telling me was Jesus is standing here and his arms are open for you. And he is so proud of you, Kim. And man, I was letting stuff go and I just cry it. I didn't, I, I don't think I ever really realized that just sitting in the presence of a good saved therapist, <laughs> sitting in this, in the safety net of a good saved therapist 
sozo therapist, you know, that really what I had thought was going to be that, that God's ever never said, I don't embarrass you. Right. I don't embarrass you. I don't hold a record. I don't even know what you still stuck for. Cause when I got on the cross, I took it. And so I remember that was just a, a huge, I would tell every one of you watching today, you know, we're, we're, we're listening to Heidi. Heidi is mental health. She's got wisdom. There are people that God sends in your life through social media. That is a avenue for you to connect with and they can walk you through the shame, the conviction, the guilt, the condemnation, the man, if I wouldn't have married this person 20 years ago, I'd be so much further getting rid of the should have, could have, and would have, and looking focused forward and saying, God, nothing in my past is greater than what you're going to bring. Cause you, you're the kind of God that is, is the comeback kind of story, God. And so yeah. it's what is the beautiful gift about this today is that you can sit here and hear somebody say to you, God loves you so much that he would still got on that cross just for you. And he would have still got up there and died. And said, for you, it is finished. That's the kind of gracious God we serve. And so it was, it was a, it was a mental, it was a mental health deliverer mm. that looked at me and literally held my heart in his hands. And that's when my life began to shift. Because mm. I realized he's a good, good father. And he loves me so much. He connected me. I started looking at every connection in my life, Heidi, as this mm. is God's kiss. Oh, so good. This is so good. I, I can't even tell you how much um, I appreciate what you're doing because you're speaking to what so many people are stuck on. Like even just you saying I was drunk. If I, I feel like there's people that are even getting set free just by you releasing some of the shame that you used to feel yeah. and to be able to, to, to share just the testimony of where you're at. Um, I have a, another question for you before I'll have you pray for us. I see a lot of, um, especially in the mental health field, a lot of validation, um, a lot of kind of just affirming where people are at and just letting people sit in where, where again, I, I don't think that it's a bad thing to do that, but not for long. You know, like if someone comes in and they're struggling, it's, I hear you. Oh, I get it. That must be so hard. Like, you know, there's a time and place for that. Um, but what do you see that we're kind of doing wrong with that? Where um, I mean, I see we just sit in it too long and then people are years and years in therapy just being validated for their pain and they're not getting up. Come and on. so I think it's what I like about your book. You're like, okay, let's get up, like quit, quit sitting there. But the other side of it is people who are really traumatized. Like yeah. you can't get up if you're in trauma. So can you speak to that, this, this problem with validation, but how do we balance that? You know, I think a lot of it, Heidi, is we get so stuck, it, uh, stuck in the deprivation and pain. And it's almost like we like the attention that being broken gets us and we don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And we end up there stuck for years, still talking about what our dad did to us 48 years ago. And we can't even remember the details, but somewhere we're afraid. We're mm -hmm. afraid. What if I let this go and then... I'm healed and people looking at me and they're expecting something of me that what if I can't give them because I messed up before? I am not a coddler. Like, in fact, today on my prayer call, I'm like, okay, somebody's, somebody's on here today and you still talking about your ex that left you three years ago. We're all tired of hearing it. And you should be tired of hearing it. And you got to get up for your kids and you got to use your pain as a pulpit. It is yes. time to stop needing the approval. It is time to stop allowing people bringing you meds and you liking to be sick. It is time for me to realize that the Bible says he's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He says, yeah. if you will get up and you will put your eye it, impossible, I will show you the I'm possible. Nothing changes until we get sick and tired of talking about what's happened to us. Come and on. you know, when you get healed, Heidi, you tell the story differently. And healing is God's portion. That's his favorite thing to do. You serve a God that is a heart healer, but he can't heal what you won't give him. He can't heal what you won't reveal. And so I would invite every single one of you watching this to take inventory 
And if you don't like your life, change it. Mm-hmm. Stop staying at a job so that you're making $400 a week. And well, it's at least it's some money, but you can't pay your bills. Right. And you're staying there because you're scared to jump. You're, mm-hmm. you're sitting on a book that you should have written, but you're scared. What if nobody buys my book? What if they do? Mm-hmm. What if somebody doesn't commit suicide because you decide to tell your story? Yes. Does it change until you walk away from it? Listen, I don't care if you feel like a turtle stuck in peanut butter, move your big, thick thigh, pull it. <laughs> and then get and stop hanging around with people that keep enabling you. You got to have some people yes. in your life that look at you and say, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Stop talking about him. Mm-hmm. Stop stalking him on social media. Stop mm-hmm. feeling like your, your pieces is all God's going to do. Break up with some of these subscriptions that you are. You got people in your life and you are, you are, you are sitting here getting every single month. You're, you're, you're adopting their issues. Break up, cancel their sub- your subscription to their issues. Stop RSVP into people's arguments. And work on you and watch what God will do. Stop sitting in a place. If you were still sitting in a place talking about the same thing more than 12 months, Mm -hmm. you ain't get no money for being in those feelings. You got to get up and you got to walk out of it and you got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. And you got to realize ain't nobody coming to get you. You got to get up. Woo. Get up. Preach it, girl. Preach it. (laughs) Yes. And this is a very big help. If you, this book is amazing. I highly recommend this. So I would love it if you could pray for us and then we can, sh- I'll share the links and you can let us know how they can buy it, how they can follow you and even get involved with your mentorship program. You have different options for people to be involved in actually being coached by you. So thank you for being on. Thank you. I'm so honored. I, I like you. I love oh, your spirit. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I like you too. <laughs> Lord, I just thank you right now for man, the people that are watching this today. There's some there's somebody watching this 12 years after this podcast was taped. And it is somebody that you divinely connected. Lord, I pray for every person that is on here today that have lost their dreams. Maybe they're in a fight of their life right now, feeling so isolated and so alone. And the enemy is punking them out, making them feel like their past is the best their life will ever be. Lord, I thank you today that you're the kind of God that comes on the scene when we open our arms and surrender to you. Lord, I pray that you are downloading your peace into my friends. It's almost in the spirit. I can see like a Pez dispenser, man. Them Pez dispensers, you put that little candy in and you pull that neck back and the the candy comes out. That's what you're doing to us today. You are literally using all of our mess. You're lining up the test. You're lining up the testimony. You're lining up the trauma seasons of our lives. And you're using, you're using it as a platform for us to help deliver your people. We are you with skin on. And I pray today, Lord, that we meet you like the woman with the issue of blood. We we meet you at the, at the end of our rope, which means we're at the hem of your garment. Lord, just pour your spirit out. Lord, I thank you today that you're giving us spiritual amnesia from stuff that we've been holding on to. All of a sudden, we're gonna wake up and be like, man, I let that stop me for a long time, but th- this this is done. I'm getting up and I'm gonna knock that devil in the teeth every day by reaching down uh-huh. and every single person I can out of the depths of hell of the very place I used to live. Father, thank you that you never walk out on us. Thank you, Lord, that when we feel like the curtains of our lives have closed and the production is over for us, that you show us that you had to close the curtain in order to set up for our next scene. Lord, I thank you today that there are best-selling authors on this with us. There are entrepreneurs uh, that are gonna change the generational curse of being broken off of their families. Thank you, God, that we got some people today that have decided I'm getting up. Ain't nothing gonna stop me from getting up. I don't know where I'm going, but I ain't staying here. Today, God, give us courage, give us strength, give us boldness. Lord, download love so big into our hearts that we can love the hell out of people. We can literally love their pain away. That we can literally love the hell that they've been walking through away and we can show them what hope looks like. Let us be hope dealers. Let us be purpose pushers. 
today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Oh, that was so good. Thank you so much. So much freedom in this in this time with yeah. you. How can people find more out about you and get involved in your programs? Everything about me is right there on my website, realtalkkim.com, realtalkkim.com. I've got an incredible mentorship program. Uh, thousands of us get together every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time through Zoom. And mm -hmm. we literally, I teach you how to get up. I teach you how to walk out. I just built this community, Heidi, because when I was walking through my divorce, I felt so alone. And I said, there will never be another person that's connected to me that will feel alone. And so it's $20. I did it at $20 because it's 60 cent a day. I wanted even the single mamas to be able to have a community. And if you yeah. don't, if you don't invest in yourself, you don't take it seriously. Uh, and so 100%. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got a beautiful yeah. RTK inner circle. You can join right there on my website, realtalkkim.com. I've got great oh, master classes that are available. All of it's on my website, realtalkkim.com. I even have a cool store. On yeah, RTK. so cool. And I also want to encourage you to follow her on Instagram, um, YouTube, and um, listen to her podcast as well. So thank you so yeah, much for being on. Yeah. Thank you.